The following program may contain adult language and mature subject matter and does not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Reality Radio 101, its advertisers and sponsors, or its listening audience. Listener discretion is strongly advised. Welcome to the Canadian Cigar Scene with your hosts, Julian Luke and Kevin Newell, right here on Reality Radio 101. To contact us live by telephone, dial 905-725-1907. Toll free in North America, 1-866-905-7325. Worldwide, 1-866-656-5477. Send us an email, realityradio101 at yahoo.com. And now, your hosts of Canadian Cigar Scene, Julian Luke and Kevin Newell. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Canadian Cigar Scene. I'm sitting here beside my compadre, Julian. You take a terrible picture. Oh, did I, I try, yeah, even during the warm up there. You got your eyes shut, one eye shut, you got bugger eye with the other one. It's Dude, terrible. I was playing drums. I was oh, just. It's air drums. Yeah, that's right. That's what I do. It's my jam. Are we periscoping tonight? No, we're not because we're late and it's the Thornton Arms bloody fault. Hey, we went to the pub, had a wee pint and a bit of, a bit of grub before we came. Bit of construction. That's a pain in the ass. We had ass. to go into and the, the waitress, karate studio. The waitress, too. Come on. Yeah. Come on, girl. On. What the what hell? So what, good food. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Every week. Never, never fails, and the and the and the Guinness pour is great there. Yes, it does. It does. <sighs> so, what are we doing this for, Ju? This is all about the education, man. We're all letting everybody in Canada know of the amazing things that are happening in the cigar and pipe world. And uh, I put that latter part in there tonight because we got a real special guest. Absolutely, we do. Absolutely, he doesn't know how good he is. No, no, he uh, does not know. No, but uh, he's like I'm, a rock star in the business, and we can't convince we, him. Of we that. call him a rock star in the world of pipes and pipe manufacturing, and he's uh, one of the uh, probably one of the top ten pipe makers in the world. His name is Michael Parks. Welcome to the show, Michael. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Yeah, it's great to have you here. I tell you, we've been we, it's t- it's taken some time to get you into the sh- the studio, but uh, we finally got you here. Before we start, mm-hmm. did did uh, Price sign with the the Red Sox? What the 270 hell? million or 17 million? No, 217 uh, over seven years or something. Stupid I just like threw that. up in my mouth. Yeah, it makes me sick. Yeah, he's he's dead to me. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we're back. We're back with the show now. Uh, oh, how are you doing, Gary? You good? Yeah, thank you very much. Good man. Thank good. You. How are you guys? All right. Yeah, fantastic. Good. I know you're going to be listening intently oh, on yeah. this show. Oh yeah, I'm a pipe fan. Yeah, we got a uh, Gary, our producer here, is a, is a pipe smoker himself, and I know that there's a lot of guys. Uh, Especially our, you know, our customers and our listeners that are uh, excited to talk about this. So, so uh, Michael, let's get into this here. Let's get jump right in. We're gonna jump Just right like into that. this, man. Uh, so, uh, so you're you are a pipe maker. I am a pipe maker, and that's what you do for a living, full time. How the hell did you get into pipe making? Mm, let's see. How many years ago? You, how, how many years you been doing this? Uh, more than ten. Okay. More than ten, and I believe it began with art school. Yeah. Actually, no. Uh, before that, it began with my grandfather's house, which we drove by tonight in Oshawa. Yeah. Yeah. And he was a, a pipe smoker. Okay. And so uh, he gave uh, my brother and myself pipes when we were really young to uh, smoke, uh, despite <laughs> what my mother had to say about it all. Nice. So we thought he was the coolest. Absolutely. And and we did. And yeah. uh, so from there, I started smoking a pipe and then uh, art school. Okay. I made pipes. So uh, so you, you, what did you take in art school? Is there something specific? Did you, uh, did you specify something in some area that you're interested in? Or, or was it just like general arts? Oh, uh, I would say general arts, but all fine arts. You yeah. Know? And um, 
Hang on, hang on, though. You didn't go just to any art school. Well, I went to uh, university. I went to the University of Guelph. Right. And did, and did a fi- uh, well, five years. Five years. Well, four years. Four years fine art. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like, so That's so, pretty difficult to get into doing that, isn't it? I suppose. I suppose. And difficult to stay with. It was rigorous art training. Mm-hmm. And um, as for the pipes, though, you know, I made all kinds of good ones at school for people in exchange for, you know, for beers, and I'd make them as they liked. Yeah. I made a pipe out of a seashell for a guy. Really? <laughs> yeah. So I That mean, was a different time. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. So, and, and different tobacco. Um, no, I'm, I'm curious. Like, I mean, was that your, was that what you were always making? I mean, did it just evolve right from the start, just making pipes? Or were you, were you fiddling in other things? Or was it always just the pipe, interest in the pipes? Do you mean uh, regarding art school? Yeah. Oh man, no. We would. I made all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, my my strongest suit was painting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I used to do. Uh, I really enjoyed landscape oil painting. That was something I would go and do and take an easel and and literally stand out by the side of a river and and paint. just go and then yeah. go back and work on the project. Oh yeah, I did a lot of that. Do you, st- my, do you still do that? Uh, uh, I've tried. Point? I've tried. Honestly, though, I, I essentially works a full time artist. And so I, mm-hmm. I keep quite busy doing what I do. Okay. You know. Yeah. So where's your shop? I'm located in Bowenville, Ontario. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, you're an Oshawa-born boy or what? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I like yeah. this. Or straight from the sh- straight from the schwiggity. So, schwiggity schwa. Okay, so let's let's start at the start here. Uh, let's start from the beginning. You, you, uh, you get an order for a pipe. First of all, you have to source your briar. I mean, let's let's explain to the listeners what are what, what actually are pipes made of, uh, Michael. I mean, just for the layman, let's let's just break it down. I well, mean, I suppose pipes could be made of anything. You okay, know? I seem to remember. I guess this is maybe slightly off topic, but once in university, making people you know, pipes out of a potato. Yeah, it's true, but uh, antique pipes, um, say. Uh, 17th century German pipes could be a uh, walnut burl, something mm-hmm. like a what's called a, an ulm, a U-L-M. Uh, and then there's meerschaum, mm-hmm. which is uh, the white material people know, uh, and they, uh, they connect to Turkish pipes. And that's uh, meerschaum, I believe, translates to sea foam. It's uh, calcified seashells. Mm-hmm. And so they're predominantly uh, made in Turkey because Turkey is predominantly where they find meerschaum. Now, do you, work with, no, do you work with meerschaum at all? Hard to get, hard to get. I believe okay. there's an export ban. You can't get it out of Turkey. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so those are sort of like fringe things. And, and people make pipes out of all kinds of stuff, right? Yeah. Essentially, and I guess it depends what type of pipe, too, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There are the, uh, the Japanese pipes uh, that would have like a small brass fitting that you would smoke from, but only like a, like a, a very tiny amount of tobacco. Yeah. And that would be sort of then like a lacquered bamboo tube or something like that. But uh, the pipes that we all know and love, they'd be briar. Okay. And where do you source most of your briar from? Uh, my briar usually is Italian. Okay. Um, do you have one supplier in particular that you like, or do you just, how do you source it? No, no. I, I've, I've gone to Italy a few times. Yeah. I have. And uh, to a few different mills and, and chosen wood that way. Uh, once, uh, the, the first wood that I ordered from, from Europe, I, I was actually in St. Claude, France, which... Uh, was uh, like somewhat regarded as the birthplace of the Briar Pipe. I think mm-hmm. it's just a you know hometown created legend. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, but I, I was uh, in a, a pipe factory there, Junod Pipes, and um, I bought uh, Algerian wood there. That okay. was the first wood that I had shipped back. Mm-hmm. But then uh, going to the mills in Italy, I was able to hand select blocks and bring them back. Okay. Um, these days, I uh, I go to the Chicago Pipe Show, uh, and I've gone every year for the last well, I guess it'd be eleven or twelve this year. Okay, and that's in the spring, and there are a few mills that show up there and bring wood, and it's much easier to just go pick some wood mm-hmm. in person okay. and choose and, and bring bring it home. Yeah, and it really makes a big difference for you to be able to select your own your own briar. <clears throat> for me, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, because oh, let's see, a block of wood could be twenty five to fifty dollars. Okay. Uh, U.S. or or Canadian, but I guess in, it'll be U.S. Say, on average, thirty to forty dollars U.S. a block, and it can make quite a difference though, because then uh, uh, a sandblasted to a smooth pipe for me could be the difference of, <coughs> I guess, a thousand dollars really. Yeah. 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 I think we should, you know, I mean, let the let the uh, listenership know. I mean, basically, your pipes retail from what range, typically? Wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
Does Julian ask any questions? No, or, not, really? No, not really. Like, I've got I, a question. I, like, I, actually, I, like I actually Julian. have a question. I, you know, I'm yep. getting killed over here. No, know? sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I get to do the halftime show. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, know, like, Kevin does sorry. a very good job yeah, in the sorry. interview. I'm watching it with my left eye. No, <laughs> no, just. But, you know, no, but I did have a. I did. I did think of something. What, so, <laughs> so when you go and look at a piece of briar, do you see a pipe, or do you see a pipe first and go looking for the briar? Oh, absolutely both. It really? it really depends what I I work mostly custom order so usually someone's coming to me and they're with a request and then I'm 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 then looking for materials you know like uh, stem materials or uh, I often use mammoth ivory as a mac uh, as an accent material and then the wood I'm looking for the wood that will will fit best to the shape of the pipe and whether it's a sandblast or a smooth wow so yeah. so let's so let's talk prices here. What are we looking at for a, for a Parks pipe rate? You know, a range, just uh, to give people an idea of what you what you do. Right now, uh, entry level is uh, six fifty, and that would be uh, that that's a, a smaller sandblast or, or rusticated. I really don't do rustication so much; just sandblasting. Okay. Um, straightforward classic. Okay. Yeah, and then oh, I guess, but where I'm mostly working. Is is sort of in a oh, 750, 850 range. Yep. And and then uh, smooths though for me, I have um, uh, a process where I fi- uh, where I develop the finish and build it up. Those are twelve hundred. Usually the working range for those is about thirteen fifty to eighteen fifty. Okay. Okay. That gives people an idea of what we're sort of you know the artist himself and the amount of work it takes to, to build into uh, yeah. the masterpieces that you make. However, it's important to note, I'm also back-ordered. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, my wait list is about 10 to 12 months. Yeah. yeah. So people... Which is awesome. We'll, we, yeah, we'll get into that. We'll get into uh, how we can contact you and maybe you know look at your website and stuff like that in, in, a, in a couple of minutes. But So you've, d- you've picked your briar. And you've uh, you've talked to your customer, and you work back and forth with your customer, typically through emails or phone calls or what have you. If they're if they're overseas, and you design you design a pipe, is that how it works, or do you both? How do, I'm not sure how it would work. Pictures, pictures, pictures work the best. Yes. Okay, yeah. So he would uh, he or she would send you some pictures, and you would develop some designs and send them back and forth, sort of thing. Usually, what I'm doing. And is uh, first off, usually I'm dealing with a pipe buyer who really knows what they want. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the, they know they know something like the the chamber diameter and length and weight of a pipe they're looking for. Very specific, then. Oh yeah, very okay. specific. And um, and they also know the shape, and then the shapes themselves go back to uh, classic English shapes, mm-hmm. quite commonly. Yeah. So if you think of the classic. English pipes. There we go. There's our shape chart right there. Yeah. 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 So it is. I was trying to print that off your website for use in the store by the girls. I thought it was fantastic. And I just, it was driving me nuts because I couldn't get it to go la- uh, port- landscape. I could only get a portrait. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So, so you, and then you incorporate your own materials into this, right? I mean, uh, you know, is that where your artistic, uh, your artistic uh, area comes into, comes into effect there? Is you, you tell them you can use other materials in there as well? Material somewhat. I think um, my uh, my my artistic uh, efforts they, they go as much as into the craftsmanship, like kind of the subtle choices, maybe mm-hmm. like coloration or grain alignment or you okay. know tweaking the shape. Um, there aren't really sometimes the stem material though. Yes, mm-hmm. you know, does the stem material and then the matching stain color okay. things like that. Okay, um, doing sculptural or. Uh, Kind of art pieces. That's not something I've done as much recently. The last oh three or four years have I've really made a lot of classic pipes. And it's made to order, very made specific. Made to order and very and, and focusing on sort of classical beauty. You mm-hmm. know, the, yep. the refined shape. Yeah. And so, good smokers. Yeah. Very important. Yep. Yeah. I know a few people that have your pipes and they just they rave about the smokability of the pipe. They say uh, it's fantastic. Uh, fantastic. So. How do you go about? How do you go about making a pipe? I mean, what tools are involved? Do you use just sort of artisan tools? Are you using lathes? Are you using computer-generated machinery? Or what do you do? Do you use it all? I guess uh, basic, basic tools. Mm-hmm. There's there's a lot of handwork yeah. involved. Yeah, you know the uh, the stems, for example, they they're drilled 
on a lathe and then turned somewhat in that the, the cylinder is fluted. Um, and once they're fitted to the pipe, I'd then use the sanding disc and something like that. So a bit of machinery that way. But mm -hmm. then the finishing is by file, file and, the, and sandpaper. I have a, a little metal scraper. And, you know, mm -hmm. that's my tool. And it's, you know, I use that with the sand, the sandpaper. And that's your baby right there. That's it, you know. Um, and so there's a lot of handwork that way. Okay. A lot of attention to detail. Uh, now, Briar being, uh, you know, a natural product that has imperfections all over the place in it. Um, I mean, have you ever got a pipe down to the exact shape and you've done that last little one, little bit of sanding and went, oh, shit. There's oh, a, yeah. there's a, there's yeah. a. It's brutal. There's a, as I call it, a, a peck mark. In the <laughs> there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a flaw in it. I mean, does that happen? Absolutely. So what do you do then? Do you fill it? Do you, you swear? You swear loud. <laughs> Straight up. Yeah. <laughs> it's called rusticated. <laughs> That's when they become rusticated. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So, I mean, you, you, you have ways, I guess. And, you know, you. you well, know. You, uh, w making a smooth, um, and it's, it's tricky to to take an order for a smooth pipe that's a certain color, a certain finish, mm -hmm. for just that reason. You know, I have to, like someone's showing me a picture of something they love, and, you know, it's a picture they love because it's awesome. And then they're like, make this awesomeness, you know, and I can't exactly recreate it. I have to find the wood that, that matches, right? Yeah. So often in a, in a smooth, I'll, I'll be two to three blocks. Is that right, eh? Two to three. And so what I then do is... If I'm, you know, sort of putting on a smooth, I'll put a, or making a smooth, I'll put on three blocks or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then that way, one of them is usually bound to work. And then a few others can be sandblasts. And okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it uh, looks like we got to go to a quick commercial break. So uh, we'll be back again with Michael Parks in a couple of minutes. Just letting everybody know you're listening to the Canadian Cigar Scene on RealityRadio101.com. Let's get smoking. Looking for a great place to go for excellent coffee and delicious treats? Come visit us at Three Steps Up Coffee House in Whitby. Our coffee is made with freshly ground free trade coffee beans that are brewed at just the right temperature for the ultimate coffee drinking experience. Try one of our mouth-watering handmade treats that allow you to enjoy a little slice of heaven. We offer hearty organic soups such as butternut squash with toasted almonds and sweet potato carrot and ginger. There is something for everyone, from healthy salads to gourmet sandwiches and delectable chocolate treats. Contact us to find out more about our amazing catering services. Find us at 605 Brock Street North in Whitby, Ontario, licensed under the Liquor Control Board of Ontario. Open Mondays to Saturdays, 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Seating for private functions and events available. Contact us by phone at 905-430-7817 or check out our website at www.3stepsup.weebly.com. Three Steps Up Coffee House. Three Steps Up to a Perfect Cup. Chris Lee West Indian Market has been serving the West Indian community for over 15 years. Visit their new location at 20 Harwood Avenue South, Unit 7 at Harwood and Kingston Road in Ajax. They have a wide variety of Oriental, East and West Indian groceries, fresh fish, meat and vegetables. Load up your cart with goodies from the island at very reasonable prices. They have weekly specials such as non-alcoholic wine at two bottles for $5. Visit Chris Lee West Indian Groceries at 20 Harwood Avenue South, Unit 7 at Harwood Avenue and Kingston Road in Ajax or call them right now, 905-426-2111. That's 905-426-2111. The following program may contain adult language and mature subject matter and does not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Reality Radio 101, its advertisers and sponsors, or its listening audience. Listener discretion is strongly advised. No, 
Welcome back to Canadian Cigar Scene with your hosts, Julian Luke and Kevin Newell, right here on Reality Radio 101. Get on board. Send us an email right now. Reality Radio 101 at yahoo.com. And now, right back to your host, Kevin Newell and Jillian Luke. Welcome back, everybody. We are in the studio with uh, the incomparable Michael Parks, pipe Woo! maker extraordinaire. Uh, we got a couple of quick things to get to here before we get back to Michael. Uh, Victory Cigars events. Get a pencil to jot these down. Oh, I love it when he says that. Uh, we still have the uh, the Fender Precision Bass Guitar in the shop. $10 a ticket. Thank you very much to... Uh, Big John Dufek for donating that so that we can uh, send all the proceeds to a local Osh- Oshawa youth shelter. Uh, fantastic. Ticket sales are, are uh, brisk, and uh, we're, we're going to raise a ton of money, which is great. Good. Uh, December 13th, we present our... Tw- that's the first day of our 12 Gars of Christmas. Oh, that's when I, uh, my Twitter feed starts a buzzing. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I like it. Oh, sweet Jesus. Um, we've also been aware, uh, made aware that uh, the Chicago Pipe Show, if you're interested, you are... Wide, it's wide open to the public. If you're interested in pipes, uh, I know a bunch of our customers have gone down in past years, um, and our, our guys who are part of our pipe club, the uh, Lakeshore Smokestacks. It is on uh, April 30th to May 3rd of next year. That's the Chicago Pipe Show. So you can search the internet and scour there and find out more information. Over to you, Jude. And Michael says that's the biggest show in the world, the biggest pipe show in the world. Oh, buddy. Yeah, worth, worth going to. Um, on cigar scene happenings, uh, a, note, a note that's got us uh, all a bit concerned. Quebec has passed a flavor ban bill last Friday. Now, apparently, this hasn't received final assent, but it's gone through all the steps, and it's pretty draconian. They are going to ban all flavors, menthol, clove, all adult flavors, pipe tobacco, the whole nine yards. Apparently, from my sources, uh, they're going to ban wholesaling six months after the passage, and there will be no retailing after nine months. Uh, this legislation is ridiculous. If you're in Quebec, you need to get in touch with your member of your legislature and tell them you do not support it. Communism liberalism sucks. Is a, liberalism is a mental disorder. <laughs> I thought it was communism, but... Yeah, that's yeah. what it sounds like. Yeah, socialism. Yeah, it's crazy. A lot of isms. It's crazy. There's no need for this, but they're just doing this and, and denying things to consenting adults. So, in uh, you know, it's kind of appropriate that the person we're giving a shout out to this week is from Montreal because we got our good buddy Sylvain from Chamal des Filles in Le Pontigny, Quebec, just outside of Montreal, 47 Boulevard Industrial. He's got a full service humidor. This guy is a beauty. Make sure you go see Sylvain, Chamal des Filles, and you can get him at www.chamaldefi.com. It starts with a C. That's all I'm going to tell you because otherwise you're never going to spell it. Where is Repentigny? It's uh, ju- if you keep going past. <laughs> Say it uh, again the way you said Repentigny. it. Repentigny. <laughs> Very good. If you keep going past, <laughs> keep going past the island of Montreal and just a little bit further up to Saint Lawrence on the north side of the shore, and uh, you come to Repentigny. Or if you're looking, if you look really close, you'll also find Repentigny. Yes. Okay. That's it's near there too. <laughs> What a beauty! We're back with we're back with Michael. <laughs> I'm an idiot. What can I say? Okay, so we've made the pipe. Okay. Yes. Pipe is made. Where is your customer? Where's where are most of your where's your most of your customer base? Mostly to the states. Yeah. No, mostly okay. to the states and all over. Um, my production is quite limited, right? Mm-hmm. So, I'm uh, I'm not uh, I, I I couldn't really. Give you uh, any, any kind of indication of, of, of where they, they, they sell mostly. It's, it's or sort of all over. Right now, mind you, I'm making uh, pipes for a group of friends from Japan. Okay. Yeah. They're yeah. on the workbench. And then I'm just finishing up one that's going to Austria. Wow, very cool. So yeah. basically worldwide. Would they, would they go on your website to, to uh, contact you? I mean, how do we go about doing this? You know, if we decide we want to get a, a Michael Parks pipe? Absolutely. Yeah. You go to my website. It's uh, www.parkspipes. P-A-R-K-S, pipes.com. And it is Should a, be an email. It is a spectacular website. I mean, there's some of those pipes. Nice. I mean, they just, it, I'm always blown away. I, I show it to customers all the time. Oh, I yeah. say, go and check out this website. And they're just like, oh, my God. You know, it, it Thank is, you. Thank you, you are yeah. a true artist and it's fantastic stuff. So uh, let's go back and talk about unique materials that you've used in the past and in stems and inlays in your pipes. Is there certain certain things, even in, uh, even in, uh, how they're set, uh, you know, I, I remember walking into the shop the first time uh, you weren't even in the shop. It was uh, another gentleman was in there, and uh, 
you had that volcano pipe and i'll never forget oh, looking at that, if that yeah. has that on yeah, three yeah. you made a standard of three pieces of pink coral and it sat red on coral. top red coral and it sat on top of a piece of meteorite be from naples i think the red <laughs> coral was and it was on a piece of meteorite <laughs> yeah. yeah like who thinks of this shit that was fun it looked cool it looked it, insane it, it, there was an entire book you made of it for the guy too uh, yes yeah yeah <laughs> The, well, the idea there was that pipe was also a picture. I was having fun uh -huh. at, with that one, and and the coral was to represent the lava underground. There is a photo of, of that uh, on the website in the, uh, I believe it's special art pieces. Okay. Yeah. Within... What, and what else would I use? It's other things in the stems and stuff like that, different unique stuff. Uh, let's see. I, I made a, a really interesting seven-day cigar holder set for a gentleman in Japan. Uh, it... it it was comprised of eight holders, though, because according to him, you smoke two cigars on Sunday. Ah. Yeah. And uh, they were matched to uh, Monte Cristo's. Oh, I believe. I think it was a 1,000. And then, oh, a number. I can't remember the other. Smaller. They were both smaller cigars. Actually, mm -hmm. it was for his wife. They were the oh, cigars really? that she enjoyed to smoke. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty wild. Um, Art Deco was the theme, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the materials within that set were were really cool. The the one, I um, I made a an eight sided panel sort of outward tapering holder of uh, black lip uh, alban abalone, so mm -hmm. black lip mother of pearl, the, the one that's sort of like purpley gray. Okay, that was really wild. Wow, I mean, how do you source all these materials? That's not too hard. No? No, yeah. you can sort of get out there, get digging. I really like uh, interesting natural materials. That's that's sort of what I, I lean towards. I know you mentioned uh, mammoth ivory. You, did you use like antler, stuff like that, anything along those lines? I've used antler a bit from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I get. I guess I, I like to, you know, I like the idea of, of other natural materials, maybe like amber or uh, copal. Or, mm -hmm. um, another interesting one is uh, morta, the uh, bog oak. Have you guys heard of that? No. No. So this is uh, oak trees that have uh, fallen and been preserved in the peat bogs. Uh, there's, and uh, all over Europe, really, you know, I've heard of French, uh, Ukrainian. Uh, I, what, I have a little bit of Ukrainian right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Irish stuff is great. The Irish stuff is pitch black. But I think there's an export ban there as well. Really? Uh, in Ireland specifically, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, oh, wait. So that's like 4,000 years old. Which wow. is totally cool, That's and the wood is pitch black, and the streaks are almost like like silver silver streaks. And you can't see a grain in it. You well, can still see a just, grain. Just just the, the the silver halo. Yeah. It's really wild. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. That's that's very cool. So when you make a pipe, do you have a, a specific sort of insignia or mark that you put on your pipes that that tells everybody that, that yes, that's a Parks pipe? I do, I do. On the stem, I have a uh, I call it my signet. It's uh, mother of pearl, but it's just crushed mother of pearl, so just crushed fragments, mm -hmm. and then uh, they're they're inset in uh, in a clear resin, and okay. that's and that's the the dot. So each one's different, mm -hmm. and then they're stamped with my name mm -hmm. and uh, my pipe logo, okay, uh, and a grade and a year and Canada. Very cool. Do you, do you ever get nervous when you come to the point of like you know I like stamping ah, something yes. like yeah. that? That must be nerve wracking because it's got to be towards the end of the pipe, right? It can be really nerve wracking. It really depends. It really depends. And you get better at it. Um, things that used to stress me out do not, but there are still those that do. Sometimes, you know, because things can go wrong. No, oh, absolutely. Yeah. At any point in time before it's in the box yeah, being that, shipped. That swear loudly. That's you know? right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so, so, uh, you, so you do make more than just pipes. You said you had cigar holders. Uh, do you make anything else? Like, I've made pipe tampers. So okay. pipe tampers that would uh, be a solid cylinder, solid body, mm -hmm. or those that would have, uh, you, you would unthread or there'd be a push tenon and there'd be a pick. Um, but not so much. Th okay. They can be really time consuming. Yeah. And, um, you know, you you know you got your love yeah, of the pipe, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, um, I'm just thinking, I mean, where does your inspiration, I mean, is there any one area where you found your inspiration for, for all this? I mean, or is there any one person that you say to yourself, oh my gosh, that without... Without uh, without that person, I wouldn't have gotten to this position, this place where I am now. Or without Kevin and Julian, I would not be here right now. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Yeah. Good answer. He's getting an A for that. I like yeah. this kid's moxie. Yeah. Right. Eh? We're taking you to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Steakhouse at Circus Circus, man. <laughs> oh, buddy. That's where it's at. Um. 
so uh, I think it's very important. I think we should just stress again to everybody that uh, if you are interested in ever having uh, one of these classic pipes made by uh, by Michael himself, um, you need to go to his website. Michael, one more time, website. Parkspipes.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, shoot me an email. And if you're in the area, uh, reasonably, to Bowmanville, you know, you're welcome to set up an appointment. Come on around. Check it out. I, does that mean I have to start setting up appointments? Damn it. Yeah. I, it's, just, it's, I just walk right in. It's just like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your, uh, your, your, your shop is amazing. It I is. mean, Thanks. when people go in there and see what you have done in, you know, limited square footage and made just an incredible workshop. And I think it's really important for people to know, too, that when you buy a Parks pipe, it's an individual piece. There will be no other pipe in the world like it. And that's what really sets it apart. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I think we got. Uh, I think we just got the axe from uh, Gary here. He's he's. You got a couple minutes. Go ahead. You started late. You're okay. Whoa. You got a couple minutes. Go he's, ahead. He's feeling in the Christmas spirit. He is. <laughs> That's right. Um, so you, uh, I mean, do you do you smoke cigars as well? Of course. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. what what else do you do in your, for your hobbies? Uh, yeah, hunting, fishing, all that sort of stuff. That is it. Yeah, yeah. I was duck hunting on the on the weekend. It was cold. Yeah. I said it many times. The ducks had left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, do you have do you have anybody else that helps you out in the shop? I do, I do. I have uh, someone who actually Tyler has helped me out for a long time. Mm-hmm. He's been uh, he was in full time for a number of years, about uh, I guess four. Okay, yeah, four or five years full time. He scaled back. He's only in a little bit time to time. Mm-hmm. Keeps him busy a couple times a week. Actually, he's in. So he would do the what would what would his what would his job be then? Well, what happens is I I take the image or whatever the design is i'll generate an image for myself Mm -hmm. and then scale it choose the wood and then i'll square the block so i i'm in control of all the grain alignment that sort of thing and the block it's and the block selection and then i map it out and he'll do the drilling so he drills and and then with the dimensions i give him and the materials he will turn and prep the stems okay yeah and then so he gives me a an assembled uh, sort of rough pipe, okay. which I then take and finish. And then typically most of your stems are made out of? Ebonite. Ebonite? Uh, ebonized rubber, yeah, vulcanite, okay. vulcanized rubber. And then you, you heat that stuff up all by, you, you're, you heat it in the oven and then bend it yourself. Is that how it works? Yeah, there are different methods. Yeah. You know, some people that say uh, a pail of hot sand. I use a heat gun. Yeah, it, it works. Okay. Yeah, and it's drilled before, obviously drilled before you, uh, before you do the bending. For me, yeah. W- what I do, it would be, it would be drilled, shaped, fitted to the pipe, uh, polished and buffed, mm-hmm. and then bent, and then potentially polished and buffed again, depending. Sometimes scratches lift out with the bending and the heat and that kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Man, oh man, it's it's it's. I've been to the shop and we've had uh, we've had events at the shop before with uh, with our customers and it, and it really is a treat to uh, to go and see Michael at work and uh, see his shop and see what he's working on because I mean yeah. there's continually stuff in the oven and and you know the stuff is drying or whatever is whatever the hell it's doing there you bring it in it's like oh my god you know it's uh, it really is a neat thing if you have never seen it before you should if you're in the Bowmanville area. Uh, you know, uh, send Michael an email and set up an appointment to come in and check it out because it is a treat. Uh, and uh, we are uh, we are really lucky to have someone like this in our in our neck of the woods. I had no idea he was there for years and years, which is fantastic. So, <laughs> truly he's, cool. He's, he's been billing you as top ten. I tell everybody you're in the top three in the world. Top so three. There top we go. Three. Wow. I've, I've got you wow. in the top three. I promoted yeah. you long ago. Wow. I've Jeez. chosen my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I drove, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> remember yeah. I drove oh, here? we remember clearly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, uh, Michael, thank you very much for uh, taking the time. I know it's, it's a busy time of year to try and clear things up for you uh, to get you out of the shop. So thanks again for taking the time to uh, come up here with us and uh, and share your uh, your craft with the world. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah. It's been my pleasure. This is Cheers. excellent. Thanks so much. Cheers. Just letting everybody know that uh, you can always contact us at radio at victorycigars.ca. Uh, Twitter, you know the Twitter, the Facebook, and the Instagram, all of Victory Cigars. Check out Horatio, and that's Julian. And uh, next week's guest is off the charts, eh? I'm hoping. We oh. just may have a real uh, a real treat for people. The legend himself, Jose Blanco. Oh, We're yeah. going to try and contact him in the Dominican Republic and uh, have a chat. Oh, yeah, he's a beaut, man. He's a beauty. So uh, on that note, again, thank you, Michael. 
Uh, everybody, uh, thank you very much for listening again, and I think it is time to have a cigar. You have been listening to Canadian Cigar Seed with your hosts, Julian Luke and Kevin Newell, right here on Reality Radio 101.